for another VBay.net 2013 GUI programming video. In the second video, we're going to look at some basics of GUI programming. So we're going to look at the differences between our console program Brethren and our new GUI based programs. We're going to look at how we should use some of the different properties to our advantage and some of the standards that we should be using when we're developing our GUI programs. Now I lied in the last video when I said we were going to do some basic programming. Okay, we will do that in the next one. I just thought I'd take this opportunity to set up a transfer between console programs to GUI programs. Okay, the one thing that you must know now is that there is no more console object. It exists, but we can't use it to our advantage. Okay, so for example, let me just go straight into view code. If I type in console, nothing much happens. Okay, if I put a sub main like we had before, just like it used to be back in the old days, and put console, it comes up, and I got right line and everything. If I press play, doesn't do a thing. Okay, we cannot use the console object to write to the screen or read from the user's keyboard anymore. It just does not work. Okay, because GUI programs are completely different. So you need to rethink how you're going to communicate with the user from this point forward. Okay, how are you going to be able to write messages to them? Well, okay, there's simple ways of doing that. Okay, and what you need to think about, you've actually got more options now than just write line and write. Okay, and changing the color. So for example, the simplest way we can communicate with our users is a label. Okay, so if we're going to have a spot where we want them to type in their name and then we want them to type in their age, well then you put a label down. In the label you write, what is your name? Okay, notice how the label resized with the text that's inside of it. Okay, and just like the text box in the last video, I can also resize the font as well. So I'm just going to go to a 12 so it's nice and big. Okay, stretch the form a little. Okay, and there's the first way of communicating. It's just putting a question in a label. Okay, how else can we communicate with the user? Okay, well the simplest other ways that we can communicate with the user is a text box. Okay, if we want them to write their name inside that text box, okay, then really we can just leave it like that or you could put something in the text box that says enter your name. Just like so. Okay, I'm going to change this font size as well. Let's up him. Just so he's a bit bigger. That means I have to resize everything. Alright, there we go. So, what is your name? Okay, there's another good way of communicating with the user inside the text box. Okay, the third way that we can really communicate with them is by pictures. Use a picture box. Put tons and tons of pictures in there. Okay, so right there is a picture box. If I put one down, okay, use the image property to get yourself an image into that box. Okay, because a picture does actually speak a thousand words, especially when you're programming. Okay, these days it's about simple text and good graphics to communicate with your user. Okay, another way that we can communicate, and I don't like to use it very often, is with message boxes. Okay, they pop up and say, you know, please enter your name, and you press the OK button. It's not a great way of doing things, but message boxes can be effective if you've got error messages and things like that. And I will show you how to do that very soon. Okay, so that's how us as the programmer can communicate with the user. So I guess, what about the other way? How do you let the user communicate with us to get input? Okay, we used to use read line all the time. Okay, well, really. Read line's gone, we can't use it anymore. So the first way is already staring us in the face, and that's via the text box. Okay, just having a text box there by default allows the user to type in stuff. Okay, so they can type in their name. Okay, and they're pretty much ready to go from that point forward. Okay, the second way we can do it is letting them click on buttons. Okay, because now the power is in the user's hands. They can type in their name, take as long as they want, and instead of pressing an enter key, they click on a button. Okay, and we can change the text of that button to say done or something like that. I'll stretch it across the whole thing. They can click on the done button, and we can say hello to you and all that kind of stuff. 
Okay. The other way you can communicate or get input from the users, it's very similar, is to use icons and use buttons that they want. So if you've got a set of buttons and they all have different meanings, put an icon on them. Okay, a great example of that is right in our faces as well. Up here, okay, you've got a backwards, you've got a save, you've got an open, you've got a save all and undo. Most people when they've been using computers or devices for a little while get used to these icons and they learn what they mean. Okay, so that's another good way of getting input from the user. So keyboards are great for, obviously, sorry, text boxes are great for keyboard input. And buttons and icons and pictures are great for mouse input. Okay, so that's just some basics and talking about input and output and how you have to change your perspective now. Okay, you're communicating through labels and text boxes and message boxes, and you're getting you're letting the user communicate with you through text boxes and buttons and icons and things similar to that. Okay, so moving on from that, we should probably look at some standards that we're going to do. Now, we're actually going to turn this to a little, little program, but I'm just going to quickly copy these objects. Now, there's a couple of ways you can copy objects in VB. The first way is the traditional old edit, copy, and then you can go to edit, paste. Okay. The second way, if you know your keyboard shortcuts, is control C, control V. That will copy those controls. Third way that you can do it, if you hold the control on the keyboard and drag down, duplicates automatically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly reword this guy. What is your age? Automatically changes. One awesome thing about VB is if you have multiple controls, one after the other, okay, and all you want to do is say change the text on each control as you go. Okay, let's say this one I can change it. What is, I know I'm not changing it, what is your name? But you can see me typing down the bottom right. And then I click on the next control, it already has text selected. And you just start typing, what is your age? And then I can click on this guy and put enter your age. Okay, and then so forth. So every control I click henceforth from there will already have text selected and I can just start typing the value in there. And so forth. I'm not going to leave it as hello, I'm going to change it back to done. So notice I never clicked down there. I simply just started typing on the keyboard, just like so. And I'll change the forms one. Oh, let's go, who are you? Just like so. All right, so that's some really basic stuff. Now, another thing to note is when you start adding controls that you think you're gonna use in your programming, it's time to start naming your controls. Personally, I don't name everything. Okay, especially labels. Labels generally are static. They don't get interacted with. They don't get clicked on. So I don't worry about them. What I do worry about is the text boxes, buttons, checks box, everything like that that they're going to interact with. So for example, this one right here is a text box and I'm expecting them to type their name in it. Just like a variable, we should give it a meaningful name. Right now, if I scroll up to the properties and have a look at its name at the top, it's text box one. That doesn't say anything to me. It's a text box, that's great. But it doesn't tell me what's going inside of that text box. Okay, now there is a set standard that I always follow with my programs, okay, and I always recommend to people when they start programming, is that the first three letters of a control that you want to name indicate what type of control they are. Now sometimes you can make it up, but most of the time they're pretty standard. So for a text box, we use TXT for text box. And following that, we have an actual name for the text box. So since we're letting the user type in their name, let's call it TXT and then with a capital N, name. And then we continue that for the rest of the controls that we think we're going to use in the programming. So for example, this one here we are. Notice again, name is highlighted down here, so we can just start typing. So it's text box, TXT, and we're going to store their age, A-G-E. -E. And then finally, the button they're going to interact with, because they're going to click on it. Okay, button, how can we shorten that down to three letters? Well, that's B-T-N. Button, done. And there we go. That's some great standards. So always name your controls before you start 
implementing any code whatsoever. Okay, it's a really good idea to do that. Now, let's just say, for instance, we're not going to do the programming just yet. I want to talk about two more things that are that should hopefully be interesting. You might see in some programs that there's little underscores under certain letters on those buttons. And if you've never used them before, what that is is when you press the Alt key and the corresponding letter, it will actually be like you clicked on that button. Okay, let me see if I can quickly find an example. I'm just going to open up this font font dialog. No, see, I can't get an example. Oh, no, I did. I saw one. Okay, if I press the Alt key, you'll notice down here in the effects, we've got an underscore on the K and an underscore on the U. So if I actually press U, it's like I clicked on under, underline. If I press K, it's like I clicked on strikeout. And I'm just going to press Enter and that's going to close the form. Now there's the two interesting things I want to talk about. The one, first one is that Alt shortcut. How do you do it? Okay, and the second one is when I press Enter, how did VB know which button I was clicking on? Okay, and that's very simple as well. So first of all, let's look at the underscore shortcut. So if I want the D to be that shortcut, what you do is come down to text, and what you do is in front of D, you put an ampersand. And right there, see? There's the underscore. And if I press under, sorry, Alt and D, it would be like I clicked on that Done button. All right, and that's all you do. You can actually put it under another letter as well. It doesn't have to be the first letter. That'll move it to O, and so forth. I'm just going to leave it on D because that's the one I want. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, what about the button that I, you press Enter and it automatically clicks it? Okay, it's like when you're logging on to Gmail or something like that. And you type in your username, you type in your password, and you hit Enter. And it's like you clicked on that log on button. You never had to. Okay, what that is, that's an accept button. Okay, so if I just click on the form, this is where you'll find this property. Okay, if you come up to the top, there's accept button right there. If I change that to button done, you'll notice it just got highlighted. I'll emphasize that by turning it off. See, it's gray at the moment. If I change it to button done, it's blue. Okay. So that means if I press the Enter key, it's going to be like I clicked on Done as well. So lots of different shortcuts and lots of different settings that are going to help you out in the future. Now, if you had a second button that you wanted to be, say, the Close button, and I'm going to do that. Let's do that now. Let's copy this one. Let's make this the Close button. So ampersand Close. And let's change the name of it because we're going to interact with it, not button one, BTN Close. And I want this guy to be the default button for when I press Escape. And that's known as the Cancel button. All right. So on the form again, down on the Properties, there is Cancel button. If you set Button Close to that one, I press Escape, it's like I clicked on the Close button. Okay. All of that I'd like you to play around with for the next five minutes. Okay, get used to the shortcuts, get used to Accept and Cancel buttons, and try them out, okay, if that makes sense. And for the next video, let's get into some dirty old programming, and I'm going to show you how different it is programming in a GUI program as opposed to a console program. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.